recording momentarily. Okay, so that's what I'm going to hit now. Human right affirmative one AC. Condition one is narrative. As China's manufacturing base goes, so the human right abuse is currently working at 11 o'clock working long hours and they don't have basic safety protocols in the environment. China label what 2015. Right now in Shanghai, China, the factory owned by the Taiwanese production group is pushing out millions of units of the iPhone 6 album. Their Asian production works, works to six days a week in 12 hour shifts. Each day they are paid 10 and full hours of work, not counting 15 meters of unpaid returns. The U.S. government continues to miss opportunities for diplomacy over human rights, which embodies Chinese decisions make us to, to continue with the status quo foreign policy 2015. The White House readout of the U.S. President Barack Obama's meeting with the Chinese representative to the dialogue continues to refer to human rights. The Chinese government, long as manipulated the threat of terrorism to justify its crackdown on 10 million exchanges, Prevents U.S. officials with no doubt and says that it is better to have discussions than create than create opportunities to raise precisely those concerns. But clearly, whatever concerns the United States raised in later years come to terrorism dialogue, we brushed aside to the drafting of this bill. Some senior some senior U.S. officials shy away from casting embarrassment to senior Chinese Chinese officials, arguing that it is counterproductive. Might too fast. Yes. yes. <laughs> sorry. Contention to assist the elderly. Sorry. Can we since we're videoing this? Contention one is inherency. As China's manufacturing base grows, so do the human right abuses. Currently, workers are living in cramped quarters, working long hours, and they don't have basic safety protocols in their working environment. China Labor Watch 2015. Right now in China, a factory owned by the Taiwan Spega Drug Group is, part, is pushing out millions of units of the iPhone 6 for Apple. There is young production workers toy six days a week in 12 hour shifts. Each day, they are paid 10 and a half hours of work, no count to 15 minutes of unpaid limitants. The U.S. government continues to miss opportunities for diplomacy over human rights, which embodies Chinese decision makers to continue with the status quo. Foreign policy 2015. The White House readout of the U.S. President Barack Obama's meeting with the Chinese representative to dialogue contains no reference to human rights. The Chinese government long has manipulated the threat of, the threat of terrorism to justify its crackdown on 10 million ethnic ethnic Xinjiang province, U.S. officials, we no doubt insist that it's consent, but clearly whatever concerns the United States raised at last year's counterterrorism dialogue were brushed aside in drafting of this law. Contention 2 is access to healthy working conditions. The products we use on a daily basis are tainted to the poor working conditions and result in poor health of millions of Chinese workers. Chinese government enforcement of labor law is the only way to improve working conditions, AFL 2015. But Zig's visit is not only for the multinational corporations, it's also for opportunity to reflect on the status of workers in China. Our complicity and the ways we can stand in solidarity with the working people of China. Labor laws in China require employers to follow the minimum employment standards. Content, content three is religious freedom. The Chinese government is out to eliminate any citizen that doesn't fall in line under its dictatorship. This is specifically true in context of religious minorities. Title 2015. Since taking over as president in 2013, they has targeted every, everyone who is likely to have an alternative opinion to the Chinese Communist Party. This means lawyers and right advocates, civil, civil society leaders, journalists, academics, debutants, Uyghurs, Christians, and anyone else who may be attempting to practice religious protect protect culture defend environment from promote rights and push for more political political openness and as this crackdown was underway one of the most high profile Tibetan -tab political prisoners is five-year-old Buddhist monk and reverend social activist died in a Chinese prison after 13 years of torture now is the key time to stand up for religious minorities in China the Chinese government has detained and tortured many religious activists HRW 2015. Authorities were intolerant of peaceful protest by Tibetans actually responding with beatings, arrests to protest to protest against mines at online considered sacred and against detention of local Tibetan leaders. In June, police beat and detained Tibetans for protesting uh, protesting against copper mining in south south of western Yunnan province. In August, police in the Gansi prefecture to Shawin province fired into a crowd of unnamed protesters and demonstrating against the detention of a village leader. Thus, we present the following plan. The United States federal government should substantially increase diplomatic engagement with China by publicly calling for an end to human rights abuses and sanctioning U.S. companies that will work with Chinese companies that refuse to follow labor laws. Contention four is solvency. The U.S. can use its trade partnership to ensure that companies in China are there to international labor organization standards. Historically, trading partnerships have showcased American credibility on human rights issues, but since 2001. 
foreign nation, foreign nations that which should be which should be granted free access to the world's biggest and richest market should be required to observe fundamental human values, including labor rights, and ensure the labor market access to the United States and the European Union should be used to expand the domain of human rights. Some countries, some countries, including China, might reject otherwise appealing trade deals that that certain. A contain enforceable labor standards, but insisting on tough labor standards, the wealthy democracies could lay claims to the moral high ground, but they might have to forego a trade pact that could help their help their own producers and consumers by boosting their income and political power of improvised Chinese workers. A trading partner that fails to enforce basic protection for its workers can gain an unfair trade advantage, boosting its boosting its market com competitiveness against countries with stronger labor safeguards. If each country must observe a common set of minimum standards, member countries can offer and enforce worker, worker protections as a more demonially optimal level. Quiet diplomacy has failed. Only calling attention to the continued human rights violations of the Chinese government would force actions to reduce religious other than other human rights violations that in 2015. But this quiet diplomacy approach embodied by bilateral dialogue processes that see that see human rights issues re relegated to confidential meetings between Chinese officials and their counterparts has utterly failed to improve the human rights situations in, ta in Taiwan and China. The message received was that the United States under President Obama was not going to prioritize the issue of, t of Tibet or human rights in China. So how does the U.S. and other democratic countries for that matter begin to address begin to address such a massive problem. Only when we protect the dignity of the individual over all else does life have meaning. Prefer this morality to all other impacts. In order for life to be worth living, we must protect individual rights and freedoms. Show 89. Given the ph philosophical obstacles to resolving moral disputes, there are at least two approaches one can take in dealing with the issue of morality neglect strategy. A more pragmatic alternative approach assumes that assumes a trade-off in moral values and principles are inevitable in response to constantly changing trends. Unforeseen challenges may empower citizens of Western societies to adjust the way they rank values and principles to ensure the moral order survives. Today, however, it may be that Western democracies, if they are to survive as guidance and individual freedom, individual freedom can no longer afford to provide innocent life the full protection demanded by just war morality. Freedoms of Western society have value only on the assumption that human beings are treated with the full dignity and respect assumed by just one theory. A free society based on the individual rights to the suction mass, mass slaughter of innocent human beings to save itself from extinction will be morally corrupt. Talk about religious freedoms as one of your contentions, and I guess my question is, how exactly does the plan solve for it? So basically, we use U.S. partnership with China to sanction the U.S. Chinese uh, companies that do not follow labor laws. That's first, and then second, we also influence the policymakers in China to be more tolerant towards these religious minorities that, that are being oppressed in the status quo. Okay, so can you give me an example? Can you give me an example of where exactly the plan might bring about social change in terms of religious freedom? Um, it's going to be like, for the religious leaders that get like beaten or arrested by police unnecessarily, their, this laws that the U.S. are going to help them to get is going to help those police people to stop arresting them without reason or stop, um, stop beating them for no reason. Great, and I guess that my second question is, how exactly do you have full solvency in terms of the United States passing this plan? Where exactly does that improve the working conditions in the factories? Can you give me a warranted card that says that it proves, 
that you guys actually saw for what for the problems that you bring into the debate and uh, yeah just an explanation of the solvency would be great so just like the first answer that i gave you we're going to use the u.s partnership trade partnership with china to influence the policy makers to improve labor laws and working conditions for these workers and labor laws when we talk about labor laws we're talking about everything that has to do with jobs so those workers are also going to get high wages and good living conditions I think that's the first Cool. Final question. Um, can you guys explain to me how exactly? What was the question? Uh, can you guys explain to me how exactly the solvency works in terms? Like, are you guys basically saying that your plan is to give China an ultimatum? Either they change their laws or we stop trade with them. Um, I think you just misquoted us. We're not saying we're gonna force like only China. We are only trying to help your people. And for us to be able to help your people, they have to also help us to help your people. Okay. One minute for questions from the audience if you have any. Uh, any questions? Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. How are you absolutely sure that um, if, how are you absolutely sure that China will agree with what the U.S. is um, your question was, how are you exactly sure if China is going to cooperate yeah. with the U.S.? Again, we're going to use our trade partnership to influence policymakers in China. No plan has a 100% guarantee, but it's better to try to solve issues in the world rather than saying to yourself that that's not going to solve, let me not try at all. What if the U.S. policy doesn't work? What if U.S. policy doesn't work? Um, so you guys, I don't know if you guys are listening to the people that came here to see. And um, what you guys should put in mind is that China is still growing. So they definitely need our help. We need their help too, but they also need our help to become a full grown country. So f they have to actually listen to us. insistence on pressuring China to adopt human rights policies would backfire, leading to increased hostility, hostility which collapsed the CCP and would create chaos. When 2013, the more contentious topic is the role human rights should play in U.S.-China relations. It should not urge China to democratize or condition its interactions with China on the leadership acceptance of core American values. Attempts to democratize China could backfire. China will not become a liberal democracy. If it did, it would collapse. The CCP fears the large-scale democratization would lead to a loss of control by the center over the provinces. A weak China in the throes of chaos would be even more problematic, especially now that its growth is vital to the health of the global economy. Cut the card out of the economy and now on to solvency takeout. First, the affirmative cannot solve their advantages. The U.S. is not the appropriate actor. Only international labor organizations can investigate the extent of labor right abuses. Lab in 2002. That brings us back to the fundamental problem that I think this commission is going to face, and that is getting access to good, accurate, solid information on the grounds in terms of what is actually happening and where they are of opportunities for change. If you read the official Chinese media, there are tens of thousands of labor disputes every year, and they have been increasing in the last few years. Many of them are very quickly resolved. The Chinese government says pay off the workers, give them their old wage, get them off the streets, cut the car out the streets. Second, the affirmative cannot change domestic labor laws in China. Without reforming domestic labor laws in China, labor right, rights abuses will continue. Point 2002. There clearly are areas having to do with worker health and safety in the coal mining industry in China. For example, 
where there are a huge number of deaths and casualties where China would probably welcome some forms of bilateral assistance and or support. This is relatively easy. That does not hinge on or touch on the far more sensitive political issues that have to do with, for example, reforming the labor law to make it possible for workers to organize their own independent trade unions. That is now, as you know, illegal. And now on to the DA. Uniqueness, U.S.-Japan alliance is strong, but it's on the brink. Glossman et al., 2015. We're seeing the training moving forward. We're stepping up the work with the Japanese and the South Koreans. That's, there's a deployment of new army artillery, artillery batteries that are, they're sending out. So we're seeing a stepping up in, of the presence. It's visible, and I think there's a sense that, again, in the United States, we understand that that's what the allies are looking for. There's a demand for more. I think that what we really should be expecting and what our allies need to be expecting is a demand for the United States for them to do more, and I think that's they're getting it, and by and large, the alliances are modernizing in ways that demonstrate a responsiveness on both sides, a receptiveness to the needs. You've got the leading forward with political economic dimensions of engagement in ways, I think, that reassure and provide a deeper strategic connection between the three countries. Next. Link, increasing diplomatic ties with China perpetually signals U.S. Abandon abandonment of security guarantees. Senatorial and Ward in 2015. China's technological sophistication and vast resources ensure that the combined strategic capabilities of the United States are not and realistically cannot be sufficient, sufficiently numerous and reliable to die, deny China the ability to deliver nuclear warheads to the contention of the United States. The relative advantage is narrowing. The economic and global cost of a war between the United States and China continue to grow. The U.S. and Chinese economies are more integrated than ever before, and China works with the United States. China's growing military power and political influence unnerve U.S. allies. They worry that because of the narrow conventional military balance between the United States and China, the United States may prove unwillingly to endure the cost of even a limited war with China, instead opting to concede on their core interests to prevent escalation. Cut the card at escalation. Next, C, internal link. U.S. commitment is key is a key driver to Japan, Japan, Japan's decisions to nuclearize. Saunders and Ferry, 2015. Japan's potential nuclear latency has been one of a great debate, debate and speculation since the end of the Second World War. There have been many theories as to why Japan would or would not pursue a weapons program, but confidence in the United States' extended deterrent would have strongly influenced the issue. The taboo of talking about Japanese nuclear weapons had been broken. While this change in rhetoric has was important, it did not end nuclear exploration in Japan. Several Japanese administrations since Sato have commissioned reports on the feasibility, both scientifically and economically, of developing nuclear weapons. In the contents of these administrations, the idea of a latent cap capability surface, cut the card at surface. Next, impact. Asia prolif outweighs multiple nuclear war scenarios, crowing. 2016, the most important reason to be concerned about nuclear weapons in Asia is the threat that nuclear weapons might be used. The use of nuclear weapons remains remote, but the probability is not zero, and the consequences could be catastrophic. Nuclear use would overturn a 70-year tradition of non-use, could result in large-scale death and destruction, and might set a precedent that shapes how nuclear weapons are views, viewed, proliferated, and postured decades hence. Cut the card out, hence, and now on to the CP. Text, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations should adopt a unified multilateral approach to engaging the People's Republic of China on strategic issues. Counterplan avoids the dissides to U.S. action, specifically the Japan dissad. Counterplan solves. ASEAN has the potential to solve regional, diplomatic, economic, and security problems. Unified action is key. Kerr Lance, 2012. In a region largely bereft of regional organization, ASEAN has been the most significant multilateral group for the past 45 years, ASEAN has grown increasingly influential. ASEAN has helped prevent interstate conflicts in Southeast Asia, despite several growing territorial, territorial disputes in the region, yet ASEAN lags far behind its full potential, cut the cut out potential. Recent soft Asian, ASEAN centrality possible. Recent summits in cooperation prove that ASEAN centrality is possible. Continued unified action is key. Send James, 2015. <laughs> Japan alliance is strong, but it's on the brink. The war and not the tag. What actually tells you that Japanese relationship with the US is gonna turn that and escalate? I'm gonna move on. Um, on the CP, what's the Asian Association solvency? 
they solved anything in the past? Yes. Like what? Like I said, they solved many different territories. So, okay, them. they solved many different things, but you don't know what those things are. Territorial um, disputes. He just told you that it was territorial disputes. Like where? Between who? Between the, its members and other countries in well, the Between country. its members. So between and its members has, own, has its answer? own disputes? Can I not finish the answer? Go ahead. I said between its members and other uh, other countries that really belong to the... Okay. Um, what? Okay. what are the countries that are in the Asia? Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. Uh, so, so which country, which country is specifically gonna influence Chinese policymakers? It's not. One which country. country is a leader or the speaker? It's to not influence. one country. The whole organization. Is okay, come so together. but which country is gonna represent the whole association? One to country speak can't with represent China. the entire association. So how are they gonna come into one the decision? The association is gonna approach China. So the whole association is gonna come into one. Yeah. How exactly is that gonna work? Are you? How, How do you know that all the countries in the Asian Association is gonna, are going to agree? Next question. Can you give an example of how our plan affects Japan? Like I said, if the United States and China work together, Japan is going to view it as a sign of abandonment. So what countries can the U.S. cooperate with that doesn't signal any abandonment toward Japan? I'm sorry, repeat that. So what countries can the U.S. work with without triggering Japan to attack us with nuclear weapons? Who said Japan was going to okay, attack us with nuclear weapons? <laughs> okay, one minute um, from the audience. Debaters, you call on people. Look right there. Okay, hey. Who'd you pick? You first. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, would there be a for these Chinese workers, we agree that it's a problem. But at the end of the day, our argument is that they cannot solve why, this problem. Why, can, why can't they okay, solve it? Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, so Scarcely implied that the entrepreneurial class has given up hope. 
what international labor organization can theoretically do the plan. We still need U.S. leadership to compel the Chinese government to change their policy, gender O2. These issues are well-known issues among the Chinese leadership. Basically, from their position, they see the necessity that they maintain the political status quo is necessary for stability. That is how China runs. They are reform-minded, thinking people in the leadership. And I think more and more people see it's inevitable in the long term. China has no alternative, that pe being a modern country. They have to follow the democratic government rule of law and protect human rights. This is actually a way in the commission for the House of American Congress and administrative and executive branch to engage in those political visions and values with the Chinese leadership. Human rights efforts with China would be successful. China's government won't be able to resist pressure to reform. Huang Chang from 13. The failure of Western countries to condemn the human rights abuses of close allies such as Saudi Arabia or Bahrain gives rise to accusations of double standards. Such hypocrisy must be addressed if the West is being truly credible in its effort to promote, to promote human rights abroad by showing solidarity with political dissidents while promoting China's ongoing integration into the global economy. The U.S. and Europe can strengthen progressive social and political forces and encourage a stable democratic transition. Combining economic engagement with consistent polit political political pressure over human rights is the best way to pro promote China. China's emergence as a peaceful global power. Now move on to the Japan, uh, Japan DA. No link, not zero sum. My phone 11. Some Japanese worry that the deepening U.S. China relations in the near area affects the uh, Japan U.S. relations. However, others believe that Japan welcomes the idea that the U.S. and China have increasingly broad based off cooperation and, current and share increasingly important common responsibility on major issues concerning global stability and prosperity. It is important for Japan. Japan to welcome a strong, prosperous, and successful China that plays a greater role in the world affairs by interacting with the U.S. Both China and the U.S. must find ways to mitigate climate change and should combine efforts. Japan needs to be a cooperative relationship. The Japan-U.S. relation is not a zero-sum game towards the U.S.-China relationship. While the Japan-U.S. relation is one of being allies, the U.S.-China relation is a partnership. There, in other words, there's no reason why Japan should be opposing the U.S. and China engagement. No impact. Japanese proliferation. Japan won't proliferate. They lack the will and prefer the U.S. umbrella. Meta 16. Foreign Minister Fumo Kishida stated, it is impossible that Japan will arm itself with nuclear weapons. As the only country that has had nuclear weapons used against it, Japan has generally foregone over militarization. Japanese official military officer civil civilians view the acquisition of nuclear weapons extremely unfavorable. Rather than dis disregarding domestic public opinion and risking punishment in the international community, Japan, Japan can rely on America's nuclear arsenal. No impact. Japan is suffering from spending deficit. Can't make nuclear weapons. Remember 15. Japan doesn't have much money to spend on defense. The country's debt is already approaching 250% of GDP. And the International Mon Monetary Fund warned this summer that it will rise to as much three times as the size of Japan's economy within 15 years. Nor is the public support in Japan for a more hawkish foreign policy. The new laws that eroded Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's popularity and provoked intense protests inside outside Japanese parliament. According to a recent Q, Q survey, 68% of Japanese want to limit Japan's military activity. Um, move on to the ASEAN counterplan. Permutation. U.S. leadership key. U.S. action and leadership is key to act as a backstop to ASEAN actions. ASEAN alone fails. Manny 16. It is delusional to portray ASEAN as a viable collective actor that has more than a marginal role in the regional political security order. Of course, leaders taking is better than not talking. But after two decades, such multilateral regional security is more at risk than ever. If ASEAN and such other acronyms disappear tomorrow, would Asia be any less secure? The answer is no. Viewing ASEAN as the more loose co coalition of disparate nations into its own fantasy land narcissism. ASEAN nations range from dictatorship to democracy. Only in ge geographic proximity does the concept of community seem plausible. The gap between aspiration and reality is the most prominent feature of Asia in nearly 50 years of existence. Asian big, biggest achievement is avoiding a vague sense of collective identity. ASEAN has a tiny secretariat with a $17 million budget. In every crisis in the Vietnam War, the East Timer conflict, the tsunamis in Indonesia, cyclones in Burma, territorial issues in South China Sea. When Asia does not want it, it's the United States that is. If the ASEAN really solves for the disputes in the territory, like what they what they like what they claim, then there would be no disputes in the South China Sea. Term U.S. pressure is key. Counter plan alone doesn't solve the app. U.S. pressure involvement is key to stop China from taking advantage of Asian structure. Loman 14. The mix of Southeast Asian interests and consensus decision making processes make for ineffectiveness and national rising tension. Asian's engagement with China is falling off score. What the Chinese are doing is using Asian's plotting consensus driven processes against it. China's aggressiveness is not sufficiently galvanizing Asian 
against China's challenge. Something needs to be done to change its calculation. It argues for greater American pressure on ASEAN while hedging against its continued failure. It is good that the U.S. consistently engaged in Asian diplomatic architecture, cut card architecture. Counterplan doesn't solve. Despite success, Asian lacks effective mechanism for sustained integration. That's Square 15. For the Asian member state, the benchmark of success for regionalism has been Asian effectiveness in bringing the region close. But while the region has been performing well since its adopted Asian charter, integration is still aspiration that remains unfulfilled. Statistically, 9% of the three of the Asian community pillar targets political, security, economic, social, culture have been achieved. Um, cut card uh, achieved. Okay. Hold on. Just share. Nice. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um. Why is starting on CP? Why is the U.S. key to success for um, ASEAN? Um, can I have the mic? Well, first of all, the first reason that we established is that ASEAN has no history of solving anything. The um, best success that it has solved is something about related to the economy or whatever. It has no history of solving for any disputes within the territory. Second of all, it doesn't establish any key leadership within the ASEAN community. It doesn't say specifically what country is going to participate and what countries are going to agree with uh, their engagement to China. Okay, so I guess my question is that if you really do believe that Asian has no possible chance of solving anything by itself, why do the permutation? Why do the permutation? Yeah. Because you guys are arguing that the ASEAN has a better chance of solving for human rights in China. We say that U.S. leadership is key, so why not both cooperate to solve better? Even if the ASEAN doesn't Thank plan, you. we have the United Thank States you. leadership. Thank you. On, on to the DA. Can you please tell me how... Okay, first, what is zero sum? What is a zero sum relationship? Um, a zero sum relationship means Japanese doesn't establish any exclusive relationship with the United States. It doesn't have any problem or opposition when the U.S. wants to cooperate with, cooperate with any other country. Uh, furthermore, do you... The, Ooh, well, okay, um, can I finish? Can you please tell me how, how do you know that the country lacks the will to proliferate if they so choose? What do you mean? What card is that? Oh, none of the card. We said that the prime minister, the prime minister said they have no interest in developing their nuclear weapons to attack anybody. We also established clear that Japan was attacked by a nuclear weapon by the United States. They're what? They have no reason to attack us. And furthermore, they also signed a treaty that they're not going to attack with nuclear weapons first. They have no reason to. And um, okay. One minute for the Again, we don't know who's going to be president yet. So, so that's a theoretical question, right? So, uh, we haven't brought up any policies on foreign relations with Trump, so I can't answer your question. Just to answer your question, um, no, we don't need to answer. Yeah. No, like just to answer his questions, like Clary's doubt. Just in case if Trump gets in, it's not gonna be like um, that handful. Like we're still gonna have like the chance to help them, but the chance might not be that high. But we're still gonna get the chance to help them. One more question. I didn't say that there was no dispute in the China Sea. I said that if the ASEAN Association has the solvency mechanism, like the NEC has claimed, they have, there was no, there would have been no disputes in the region. It only proves that they don't solve for anything.
hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the order is gonna be case uh, in pretty much the same order as the two AC harms turn uh, and then two new solve no solvency cards then DA and CP framework at the bottom. Do they know what framework is? Okay, so no framework at the bottom. Never mind. All right. So case, case, and then DA, DA, CP. Okay, ready. Extend our harm's turn argument that says the affirmative's insistence on pressuring China to adopt human rights policies would backfire, leading to increased hostility, which collapses the CCP and would create chaos. That's going to 2013. Extend that card because it explains that. Pat that the affirmative insistence on pressuring China to adopt human rights policy would completely crash the CCP, bringing about more harm than good. Uh, moving on to the no solvency cards. Yeah, gotcha. No solvency engagement won't work with China. Trade talks do not solve labor rights concerns. Engagement only works with smaller democracies, not big dic dictatorships like China. That's Freeman, 1997. Each year or so, the United States threatens China with the, with the loss of their most favored national trade status for its human rights violations and or its failure to control piracy or intellectual property rights. Given the growing size of the Chinese market, it is likely that the United States will actually act won't actually act, will actually act on these trade threats. The Chinese example suggests that the Government pressures, uh, pressures through trade may have greater potential for success on the policies of smaller economies with more democratic regimes as opposed to large dictatorships, cut card and dictatorships. Moving on, the U.S. cannot in, cannot affect Chinese laws. U.S. human rights credibility cannot impact policies over ethnic minorities. That's Walt 2015. Unfortunately, this obsession with credibility was misplaced. But as careful research has shown, states do not judge the credibility of commitments in one place by looking at how a country acted somewhere far away, especially when the two situations are quite different. In fact, when the United States did lose, or when it chose to cut its losses and liquidate some unpro unpromising position, Domino's barely fell and its core uh, strategic relations remained un unaffected. When trying to figure out what the United States is going to do, other states do not start by asking what the United States did in some conflict in another side of the world. Instead, they ask whether it is, Ameri it is in America's interest to act in the situation at Hand. And guess what? This implies that, that U.S. commitments are most credible when the American interest is obvious to all. I mean, nobody really doubts that the United States is willing to fight like a tiger to defend its own soil, right? Exaggerated worries about U.S. credibility had a number of unfortunate consequences. Ironically misguided um, efforts to bolster U.S. credibility may have in, uh, may have weakened it instead. The credibility of obsession also made it easier for U.S. allies to, to free ride something they were already Already inclined to do because they would they could act they could always get Uncle Sucker to, to, to take on more burdens by complaining that they had doubts about America resolve cut card at resolve <clears throat> moving on to the DA Answers to withdrawal inevitable. No withdrawal. The U.S. and ja Japan are cooperating in the region. That's Fair Clause 16. A U.S. Navy aircraft carrier strike group, along with warships from India and Japan, jointly uh, practice air anti-submarine warfare, air defense, and search and rescue drills in one of the largest and most complex exercises held by the three countries. The maneuvers were being tra uh, tracked by the Chinese surveillance vessel. Washington and Tokyo, uh, Tokyo have long cooperated closely on defense, and the U.S. has been uh, working to deepen strategic ties with India and to encourage new Delhi to play a more active role, not not just in the Indian Ocean, but also in the Pacific. As China shifts the regional balance of power, Americans are looking for some uh, for those who are sh uh, who are willing to share the burden. Moving on, answers to Plan Health Alliance. Japan's cost uh, that's military expansion uh, means Japan uh, takes. The Chinese encroachment seriously. That's awesome. 2016. Japan's constitutional prohibition on collective self-defense created problems. Under AIDS reform, the government has the right to assist allies whose forces or territory are under attack and provide logistical support to countries engaged in military operations. Abe also has also begun to boost Japan's military capabilities. He has gradually increased the defense budget by 2.9% in 2014 to 2.8% in 2015. Tokyo has already bolstered its defense in southwestern uh, Island chain of uh, building radar sites on uh, Yonaguni Yana, Yana Island near Taiwan. <clears throat> and the answers to no link. 
Japan, Japan uh, views U.S. engagement with China as a signal of abandonment, meaning, and that weakens the alliance. That's Novak in 2014. Why does Japan? Why do? Why do the Japanese fear fear abandonment? The U.S. has given mixed signals to the Chinese government to the Chinese government about its preferences and intentions on a plethora of issues. Japan's pursuit of the li of the limited first strike ca capability was at once both a de demonstration to its senior alliance, which is the United States partner, that Japan had the will to possess and use such ca capabilities if necessary, and a hedge against potential U.S. Uh, non-intervention in a regional conflict that pitted Japan against another regional power, in this case, China. Moving on. <clears throat> Moving on to no impact. Asian proliferate... Asian proliferation, uh, impact, Asian proliferation, Japan re reimments causes regional arms rates. That's Chella in 2015. It is po possible that ordered originally the SDF was intended as a collective security police uh, peacekeeping force. In, uh, however, in July 2014, a cabinet introduced a reinterpretation of this role, giving more power to the SDF and allowing it to defend Japanese allies. This action would potentially end Japan's long-lasting pacifist policies and uh, um, was heavily criticized by China. Prime Minister Abe was called for his uh, was called for a reinterruption of those policies, asking they allow for collective self-defense for China to pursue a more active de deterrence policy. Um, and now on to the, <clears throat> the Asian CP. Uh, answer to prime U.S. leadership key, Asian must act alone to engage China. The only way that the, that the situation benefits Asian involvement is if the U.S. and China allow it to lead through non, uh, non uh, uh, in initiatives. That's the only in 2014, uh, 15, basically saying that Asian can't act alone. Thank you. Um, my question is, I'm kind of confused about your impact, because in the earlier cards, you said that um, escalation will be between Japan and the United States, but in this card, you talk about how the Asian uh, territory will we, proliferate. Wrong. Can you elaborate on we, we never said anything about escalation between the United States and Japan. So it's Asian proliferation. No, no, no. We're talking about escalation. Okay. So is it just Asian proliferation only? Okay, so our impact doesn't. Go ahead. Okay, so our impact says that Jap if if we leave Japan, they're gonna start proliferation to feel safe because all the, everyone else has nuclear weapons, and every country needs to protect themselves against nuclear weapons. And the only way to do that is if you have nuclear weapons. And if they start proliferating, this creates multiple war scenarios in okay. the Asia. So the Japan feels alone because the U.S. decides to help abuse people in China? That's again an assumption. What we're saying is that if cooperation between the United States and China were to happen, then automatically the J Japan yeah, would end talking, up feeling abandoned. But we're talking specifically about human rights cooperation. Okay, cool. But any type of cooperation between the United so States and China would mean that Japan feels lonely. So any any increased cooperation will make Japan feel abandoned by the United States. So what countries can the U.S. cooperate with? I never to said. Make Japan feel I never said that the I United States said, can't there's engage. There's no relevance with to your question, seeing as we're talking about the U.S. and China, not U.S. and everybody else. Okay, but we need to know what in order to avoid Asian proliferation. The U.S. needs to know who and what it can cooperate with in order to not let Japan feel alone. I mean, but in terms of this resolution, in terms of this debate, your question has no relevance, so I don't need to answer it. <laughs> okay, so you said something about not talking about yours and everybody else, but you speak about Asian. In which part of the in which part of the speech? Um, that the U.S. cannot change, like help change the. Oh, okay. So what I was essentially saying there is that the United States cannot judge or change any laws in China, seeing as we have our own human rights issue. Credibility is crucial, especially in this situation. The United States cannot point fingers at another country for having human rights violations when we have some of our own. Um, 
who's trying to explain to Jeffrey. Can you like elaborate, please? Well, you were talking about like um, you, you said that you were like going to take on. Can we have like someone like that? Yep, you can just come. Cool. Like you said that um, China is going to say or one of those two groups that's coming to take on more burdens. Oh, okay. So that would be in the. Um, answers to with uh withdrawal inevitable and so basically like what we're trying to say here is that um as china rise ri shifts the regional balance of power america americans are looking for those who are can share the brand so in basically saying like who can work with us to make this world better and that wouldn't like that wouldn't affect our relationship with other countries case first let's point out the fact that the United States cannot do the plan because we're not credible enough to do the plan the United States wants to go to China and fix human rights issues but they have human rights issues in their own in their own home which they're barely doing anything about so how do you expect the United States to go to another country on the other side of the world well, yeah on the other side of the world to do something about human rights when they when they're not paying attention to what's happening in their own country Second, I'd like to talk about how their plan leads to the collapse of the CCP. They said that the CCP, the CCP won't collapse because they have a strong government. They've been in charge for so long. But with the implementation of their plan, it's going to shift the mindset of their government from, um, from, uh, from communist to, to more democratic, which would cause a collapse. Because like like was right in our card, democratization is the one thing the CCP CCP fears the most. And now on to DA. First, I'd like to talk, bring up the fact that my opponent said that they um the Japan, Japan has no money to uh buy nuclear weapons. They stated that they're in a spending deficit, so they don't have money to buy. But like my partner said, their budget, their military budget has been increased since 2014, and it has been increasing since then. So clearly they have the, the cap space, the money, to go about um, go about attaining these, these nuclear weapons. Second, they claim that the Japan has the lack, lack, Japan lacks the will to proliferate, and that's nonsense, because if the United States leaves Japan, then Japan will have no other choice but to proliferate and gain nuclear weapons, because it's the only way only thing they, they would have as leverage to protect themselves from the other superpowers in the world, i.e. China, United States, etc., anyone, any country that has nuclear weapons. And now on to counterplan. First, I'd like to say that my opponent in CrossX stated that they permed because we claimed Asian might solve. Is it not three minutes? Messing up my speech. Um, so, like I was saying, my opponents said they permed the argument because we said Asia might solve, and they believe that the United States might solve. But what what they really said there is that they also believe that Asia might solve, and that's why they permed. So you have to see that Asia is is the right actor for this because they're already in. Uh, they're already placed in. I'm letting you. Seventeen seconds left. Um, Asian is in the position to help China with its human rights issues, and that's why you should look at the counter plan and not the plan, because the United States has a plethora of other issues that it has to focus on in its own country and across the globe. So there's no need to stretch it all the way to China for human rights issues.
Because you should vote for your family group because we are fighting for humans. They might not be in our country or our citizens, but we let, well, let's try to put ourselves in your shoes. How will you feel if you have nothing to eat? If you have to eat only once in a day, walk for 22 hours, but still be paid less than you deserve? These poor people live in an unhealthy environment. So even if they get sick, they have no money to take care of themselves. Not only the workers are treated in human, religious, religious leaders are in prison, tortured, stabbed embarrassed, harassed, and punished for doing the right thing. We should help them because we are the United States and we represent love and liberty. Historically, the United States have solved and is still solving problems. We have helped, we have helped countries like we have help from common knowledge, countries like Afghanistan, Israel, Iraq, Pakistan, Egypt, Jordan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Colombia, Haiti, Nigeria, and other countries around the world. So we can help. So we can help China. If we work, if if the negative side can agree to work with the United States and the Asian counterpart together, we are going to lead the Asian and we are going to solve everything. Our plan proposes that. Our plan proposes that the that the U.S. publicly call for an anti-human rights abuses. In the Japan, the A, the judges, I want you to put in mind that the negative, they kept using the word I think, they used the word I think a couple times, therefore, the DA should not, should be ignored because they speak from parts and not facts. Their link source is from an organization in Washington DC that has no insight of what is going on in Japan, but makes books on assumptions and not facts. Their, their impact is false because based on their time frame, the US and Japan have a good relationship, and once again, their evidence is from assumption of, uh, from, uh, from, the assumption of a professor and not the government itself. The United States is getting better at its own problems. For example, there is increased union activity, better wages, quality checks, openness to strike in favor of better wages, and, work, and good working conditions and religious freedom in the United States. Because Japan, because Japan has saved money for the military, doesn't mean that they're going to use it on us. Let's be realistic. Japan has no superpowers. The plan is necessary because it is immoral for a government to oppress, to oppress a religious minority. If our affirmative comes not, the affirmative also claims that the only way to solve China's labor is by working directly with the Chinese government to form and implement new laborers that ensure fundamental human rights workers. The affirmative plan solves for human right, human right violations and religious freedom violations.
And when I say parenting, do you guys understand what we are talking about? No, no, okay. we're going to go over that. It's like, uh, oh, that's that's question. Question. at the end of the debate. Yeah. Um, what is a CCP? Child CCP. Chinese Communist Party. Okay. Do you guys understand anything about aging? Well, we're going to talk about no. all. Okay, let's start with plan takeout. First of all, the affirmative plan is completely outrageous. One, one is complete. It, it, it it forces China to do something that China obviously doesn't want to do. Uh, this entire debate, the, our opponents have negated the fact that they tell they their plan is basically an ultimatum for China to change its laws. The plan literally states that if China does not change its laws, then we are going to cut off all trade with China, and that that essentially means that oh China, okay, if you don't change your laws, I'm just gonna cut off trade with y'all, and I'm not gonna do nothing with y'all, and y'all gonna just suffer because I'm not with y'all. You know, it's basically like leaving them after they did something wrong on date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, U.S. represents love and liberty. This, these are the words of my opponents themselves. And all I have to say to that is if U.S. represents love and liberty, then why is it that when people come to this country, all they face is gun violence? All they face is death? All they face is retribution and oppression? Why is that? Because the United States is a land full of human, uh, human rights issues that shouldn't be talking to another country and judging another country based on their human rights issues without looking itself in the mirror. That's the solvency takeout that we've been, uh, that we've been discussing through throughout the round and that my opponents have negated throughout the round even though we've given countless pieces of evidence that state that the United States should not be talking to China and cannot change the laws in China if we do not change the laws in our own country first. Uh, second, uh, third, um, so now on to the diss ad. Moving on to the card that my opponent pointed out about the person in Washington. Yeah, she said that because the person is from Washington, he can't speak on Japan because of the fact that he doesn't know anything about Japan because he don't live in Japan. But at the end of the day, the, the United States has a relationship with Japan. We have a trade with them. Therefore, any of the issues that happen in Japan, we know about them. That's why we speak on them. That's why we have warranted evidence on them. So that allegation was completely ridiculous. Moving on. Um, <laughs> oh, wants is off. Okay. 
um, our opponents want to solve for human rights, but their plan is only talking about changing policies in China, is only talking about changing the policies in China. The question that remains is how exactly are they going to change the policies in China? What about their plan actually leads us to change in China? What do they do? What steps do we take? What, where are we going to change? What changes are we going to make? Are these people actually going to get change out of this, uh, out of this plan? Moving on to the disadvantage, obvious, uh, we've already spoken that the trade, that the, our relationship with Japan will fall if we have relations with China, and that will lead to the nuclear war all around because China needs to find a way, uh, because Japan needs to find a way to protect itself, and the only protection that, that, uh, that Japan sees is from nuclear weapons, finally, in the permutation and the counter plan. In terms of the permutation and the plan, counter plan, our opponents have continuously changed their views throughout this debate. They say that permutation falls, which means doing the plan and the permutation at the same time, but that cannot happen because they continuously stated that the, per that the counter plan cannot fall for anything. I have three seconds left on the clock, and that's wrong, so vote ahead. <laughs> You guys hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm yeah. Okay, oh wait, hold on. Forgot to give the order. The order is case DA, um, a little bit of impact calc. You guys learned that the other day. Probability, magnitude, time frame, and then CP, permutation. Is everyone ready? Okay, first is Kate, they keep criticizing U.S. credibility because U.S. has a history of human rights abuses, but frankly saying every single country has human rights abuses. Saying that U.S. should not interfere with human rights abuses in China is like saying just because you have done bad things in the past, you should not help people now. It doesn't make any sense. Neglecting the human rights abuses in other parts of the world only makes you a worse government and a worse country. And as a nation of democracy, we are not supposed to do something like that. And, um... They claim that the CCP will collapse just because we pressure them into changing the policy. Well, first of all, you guys need to know that China, China is still a growing country. They constantly adjust their laws. They were they were originally established as a communist nation, and now they have evolving into a capitalist nation. So they are constantly adjusting their laws. There's no pressure on them. And China has the China is actually the longest civilization or country that has ever been around. They have um, been around for. Ever. And there's no reason why the U.S. pressure on the CCP will make them collapse. Move on to the DA. They never actually give us any warrant on why Japan will actually proliferate just because they feel alone because we are engaging with China. We have been engaging with China since forever. We have traded with them. We owe them debts. And we have manufactured to China. Japan hasn't, hasn't had any opposition against that. And they haven't even answered my question during COSEX. What, co uh, what countries can the U.S. actually cooperate with without triggering Japan and lead to proliferation or escalation? A little bit of impact calculus. First, we talk about time frame. Human rights abuses in China are, right, are happening right now. The probability of Asian proliferation is just their assumption. It's not going to take place anytime soon. Moving on to possibility. The nuclear uh, proliferation or escalation, that whatever they claim in um, their argument, it's not likely to happen. So we went on that probability argument. Also magnitude, there is no impact more significant than losing your autonomy and dignity and human rights. That's why you prefer our impacts that were established in the one see These workers are being abused. They have to work over hours without being paid. And they have poor working conditions and poor living conditions. Also, religious freedom is something that ha needs to be granted to every single individual when you were born. There's no reason that the Chinese Communist Party could strip these rights away. So you prefer our impacts established in the one see over some as um, some nuclear proliferation or escalation that could possibly be posed by Japan, who has, like I said in my argument, has signed a non-proliferation nuclear non-nuclear proliferation proliferation treaty. They have no reason why to attack the U.S. Um, mentioning the fact that they were one of the countries that were attacked by nuclear weapons. They have no reason to escalate that. 